Have you wondered how e-commerce giants like Amazon or Walmart manage their vast databases to provide seamless shopping experiences? The answer lies in the join operation. And today we are diving deep into the essential concept of joins using the example of customer orders and products. Imagine you are running an online store. You have one data set containing customer order information with attributes like customer ID, order ID and product ID. And there's another data set containing products information with attributes like product ID, price, categories, etc. These data sets are like a pieces of a puzzle and join operation allows us to connect these two data sets with some common attributes like product ID and gain some invaluable insights from these data sets. But why do we need join in the first place? Think about it this way. Without joins, analyzing customer behavior and product sales would be like trying to understand a story without missing chapters. With the help of a join, we can paint a complete pictures of customer behavior, product preferences, revenue streams, and more. We have designed this tutorial to be beginner friendly, starting with the basics and gradually moving up to the more complex join types. Using clear explanations, real world examples, and hands on demonstrations, we will guide you through the process of understanding join with the help of customer data and product data in PySpark. So if you are ready to unlock the power of PySpark joins and take your data processing skills to the next level, let's get started. So let's get started with a PySpark tutorial on joins. We have uh, six joins that we are going to cover. We are going to cover inner join, left outer, right outer, full outer, cross join. And then there's a special kind of a join called as a left anti join that is also we are going to see. So stay tuned till the end. I have already imported a Spark session over here and we have created a spark session there are three data sets that we are going to see there is a customer data set there is a order data set there is a product data set the data set has been taken from uh, this particular brazilian e-commerce public data set by olist so we are using this data set and i will uh, attach a link in the description for uh, this particular data set so i have already uh, read a customer data set and this is how it looks like it has customer id customer unique id uh, zip code city state then we have a order table and you can see over here that we have uh, multiple columns like order id customer id order status then uh, customer order purchase timestamp in the product table we have multiple columns like product id product category product name length and other columns and we have a product translation table so you can see the product name is not in english over here so there is another table which gives the category like in english so you can see that there is a health and beauty uh, there is a computer accessories and other categories as well so we are going to look into uh, multiple uh, real world scenarios that uh, you generally uh, look after whenever you are doing an analytics on the customer product data set so the first question that we are going to look into is that i want to know the customer details irrespective of whether they ordered or not so it is uh, not necessary that all the customers are going to order every day there would be only a chunk of customer that are going to order uh, in a given day so i want to know the order details along with the customers who have ordered or who have not ordered so the customers who have not ordered they will have null values in their uh, order columns so what we will do over here we are going to say df underscore cust dot join uh, in the join we have to pass on the uh, order data set data frame so i will say df order there is a customer id available in both the uh, data set so if you see over here there is a customer id in the order data set as well as customer id in the cust data set and the column name is also same so in the customer data set also we have the column name as customer id and in the order table also there is a column name as customer id so when we have such kind of a data set what we can do we can pass on the single column name as a list and uh, spicepark data frame join will uh, understand that this column is present in both the tables both the data frames and then we have to pass on the uh, join name so let's say the join name is uh, left outer we are going to use left outer join because 
we want everything from the left which means that i want all the customer details in the customer table and i want the orders for those customers who have placed any order so for those customers who have not placed any order we will have null values in the orders but still we want their uh, details in this final output so what i will do over here we have written df cus dot join df order then customer id and the join type is left outer and if i do a dot show we can see that we have orders where we have null values available so now if you see in this particular uh, table we have customer id column then uh, we have uh, other columns like customer state and in the order table if you see we don't have uh, the details of some customers so we have null values available for the order columns so in this particular uh, show we only see those customers who have uh, not placed any order so if i want to see whether there are customers who have placed any order let me uh, again uh, apply this join and let me filter those records where order id is not null so that we are uh, sure that the join is applied correctly so let me do a dot show we can see over here that uh, there are customers who have placed uh, any order in the left order join we can see that we have uh, received all the customers who have not placed any orders as well as the customers who have placed any orders so this is how left outer join works whenever we want to get everything from the left table or left data frame and uh, we want whatever is common in between uh, left and uh, right data frame so we are going to get all of those uh, records in the join operation next question over here is i want to know product details regardless of uh, whether product were ordered or not so again like customer there would be a possibility that not all the products will be uh, getting ordered every day there would be some time that only a handful of products were ordered but since we have a category of all the products that are available we can uh, apply a join to see which all categories are there where we don't have any order place so far we have to uh, look into the order tables and product tables so we have to join two tables since order table contains the order information and the product table contains the product information we can see that order data set does not have the product id with it because we can have multiple products in one order so there is another data set called as a order item data set and this order item data set has uh, multiple uh, product information available for a single order so you can see over here that we have order id column we have an order item id column and then we have a product id column so we have to read this particular data set first so we have read the order item data set as well and uh, i have limited the uh, results to 1000 so we have order item data frame which has the order id as well as a uh, product id available now let me apply uh, the join so we have a df underscore order underscore item data set and we are going to join this with the df product now we have the product id available in both the uh, data sets so let me say product id and this is our join column since the product table is in the right i'll say right outer join because i want everything from the uh, right data frame and then i'll do a dot show we can see that from the order data set we have null values available which means that for a given product we don't have any uh, order place yet so let's see if uh, we have uh, some products that were ordered because in this particular sample we only see those products which were not ordered at all so let's copy this and we'll uh, apply a filter that where order id is not null so this particular statement will give me uh, all the products which were ordered so if i do a show we can see over here that we have the order val values available as well in the uh, output so we have product id from the order id we can see that this is the order id for which the uh, product was ordered and you can also see the uh, details of the product which means that we are getting all the information from the product table and all the informations from the order table where there was an order placed for a particular product so since all the products were not having any order available so we have null values in some products and we have the order values in some product
नेक्स्ट यूज केसेस आई वॉन्ट टू नो दी कस्टमर्स हु डिड नॉट प्लेस एनी ऑर्डर सो दिस पर्टिकुलर यूज केस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू यूज अ लेफ्ट एंटी जॉइन लेफ्ट एंटी जॉइन वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू गेट एवरी थिंग फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट विच इज नॉट कॉमन इन बोर्ड दी टेबल्स इन जनरल जॉइंट्स आर लाइक वी वॉन्ट टू सी दी कॉमन वैल्यूज बिटवीन बोर्ड दी डेटा सेट्स बट इन केस ऑफ लेफ्ट एंटी जॉइन वी वॉन्ट दी अनकॉमन एट्रीब्यूट फ्रॉम अ वन डेटा सेट सो लेट से माई कस्टमर टेबल इज इन दी लेफ्ट and there are out of 1000 customers only uh, let's say 100 customer or 900 customer ordered so the 100 customers who did not order anything we are going to uh, get those customers as an output so i'll say dfcus.join and i want to join it with the order table so i'll say uh, df order over here and the join would be on again on the uh, customer id column since customer id is available in both the uh, tables and then the join type would be left nt we can get those results uh, who do not have any order available in the order table and if i uh, do a count on the number of records that we have so let me apply a count so we can see that there are 991 customers who did not order anything and uh, to just validate it let me see the count of the customers dfcus.count it should be 1000 so out of 1000 customers only 9 customers ordered and 991 did not order anything to verify we can uh, apply a normal inner join to see if we are getting the distinct customer id as 9 so what i'll do i apply a inner join over here and we will say i just want to select the customer id there are only 9 customers who ordered anything or whose record is available in this particular data set so whenever we apply a left anti join we only get the uh, details of the columns from the left data frames so we don't get anything from the right data frame so this is how left anti join works let's go ahead with the uh, next question where we want a product with their english name so we have seen that the product table has uh, the name in a different language which is not english and there is a product translation table which has the actual conversion from uh, from the uh, given category to the english name so to get the english name what we have to do we have to join the product table and the product translation table so to achieve this we can have a inner join because we uh, expect that all the uh, products should have uh, their english name as well we are going to do df prod dot join then there is a different data set called as df uh, prod translation and the join type would be the inner join and the common column would be the product category i guess the product category name is the uh, column that is available so we are going to uh, join it on the product category name so let me copy it over here and uh, we can then apply the inner join we are applying inner join because we want all the products with uh, their english name so the products we do not have the english name we don't want that those products in the output so let me uh, just apply a show so we can see that the product name is available as well as the products english name is also available over here similarly uh, for this particular uh, record we can see that the product category name is artists and uh, in the english name it's art so this is how we can apply the inner join and uh, if we count the number of records we can see that the number of records of this join operation is 32328 and if we apply the uh, count on the product table we can see that the count is 32951 which means that there are some products which do not have the english translation available so this is how inner join works it only gives you the common results between two data sets so let's go ahead with the next question we have already seen this question where we have seen that there are customers who did not place any orders so let me rephrase this questions i want to know all the customers whether they have placed order or not and also i want all the orders which do not have customer associated with them so let's implement this i'll say df underscore cust i'll create a new column called as o cust which is the original customer id column and this column will have same value as the customer id so i'll say customer id 
and now i will tell you why i uh, did this i will now say join df underscore order i want to join it on the customer id column so i will say customer underscore id and uh, the kind of join is a full outer join so full outer will take everything from the left as well as everything from the right and i will uh, create a new data frame df final in which we are going to uh, save this uh, output now let's verify whether full outer join worked as expected or not so i will say df underscore final and i will select few columns like customer id focused and then order id and when i do a dot show over here we can see that there is a order available for a given customer but this customer id is not available in the customer data set this column o cost column it was created before joining the order table and i just created this column to make sure that we have the value available in uh, another column as well for a customer id to differentiate whether the customer id is coming from a order table or a customer table so this customer id seems to come from the order table because we have the order information available but in the original customer uh, column we don't have any value available similarly for this particular customer this customer is available in the customer table that's why we have the value available in the ocus column as well but it does not have any order with it so we have seen both the scenarios where we don't have any customer and we have the order or we have the order but we do not have the customer in the customer database and there is a third scenario where uh, we have the value available in all three columns which means that there are customers who have placed some order so to get that i'll just apply a filter so there are some customers who have their entry available in the customer data set and they also have placed the order so we can see that we have the list of all the uh, scenarios in the first scenario we had the customer available but we do not have the order in the second scenario we have the order available but we don't do not have the customer available in the customer data set and then we have the customer as well as order available in both the tables so this is how full outer join works let's go ahead with the next use case in this use case we are going to cover the cross join so cross join is a m cross n kind of a join so let's read some data set there is a t-shirt data set and the uh, fitting data set so we have the t-shirts dot show and we can see that we have three uh, brands available over here and in the fits data set we have the dot show we have uh, some uh, sizes that are available cross join is used when we want to have all the values joined from the first table to the second table so in this case this is a valid scenario where we can have all the size available for all the brands and we have the brand information available in a different table and the fitting information available in the different table so let me say df t-shirts dot till now we have seen that join function is available where we pass the parameters as inner outer or left entity join but in the case of cross join we have the cross join available as a different function reason being this is a very expensive operation and uh, this should be avoided if uh, there is not a real uh, use case for it there is a scenario where you want to do a cell join on a 100k record data set then the output would be 100k into 100k which would be a huge number and that operation is pretty expensive and there may be scenario that your job fails because of the uh, out of memory issues so let me apply this we don't have to pass any uh, column which is common in between two tables because cross join anyways does not care about the common attribute it will just join two uh, data sets together so you see i have not passed anything in the uh, condition and yet we are able to apply the cross join and if i see over here we have the brand zara and we have the fittings as xs s m and l similarly for levi's we have all the fittings and for h&m also we have all the uh, fittings available 
so this is how you can apply the uh, cross join this particular join operation uh, should be avoided if it is not required because of uh, the uh, out of memory issues that comes with it one use case i have shown you like where we want to use the cross join so the other use case you can think of is where you want to find the similarity between two documents or similarity between two customers based on the euclidean distance where you want to have all the customers join with each other so that we can uh, calculate the distance between two customers based on the euclidean distance so this is one use case where you can use cross join just to have the customers available in the same row uh, as the customer that you want to calculate the distance with so these are some of the use cases that we can implement using join operations congratulations you have just completed our PySpark join tutorials and i hope you found it both empowering and informative if you enjoyed this video and want to continue to our PySpark journey don't forget to check out our PySpark playlist for more videos on PySpark and speaking of what's next in our upcoming video we are going to cover the most important PySpark function window function so don't forget to hit a like button and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for joining us in this learning adventure and until next time happy coding